And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Homolocephaly, or also, depending on who you ask, Prenocephaly. And this was a request from Jill via Patreon, so thanks, Jill. The name Homolocephaly means even head, which is pretty funny. It's a pachycephalosaurid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Mongolia, and it was described in 1974 by Osmolska and Marianska. There's only one species, the type species, which is Homolocephaly colathocercos. And as we said earlier, it may be a synonym and juvenile form of prenocephaly. But the Homolocephaly type species is an incomplete skull and postcranial material. It had large openings on the top of the skull and a large round eye socket. Scientists described it as an adult originally, even though it had juvenile traits like a flat skull or even head. <laughs> then in 2010, Nick Longrich and others said it may just be a juvenile version of another adult pachycephalosaur. Horner and Goodwin also suggested that in 2009, and Longrich was the one who suggested it was a juvenile or subadult of prenocephaly. It was an herbivore about 6 feet or 1.8 meters long, and it had this flat, wedge-shaped skull roof, though the skull was pretty thick. And this is similar to Draco Rex and... Goyocephaly, and not similar to other adult pachycephalosaurs. It had a broad pelvis. Some paleontologists think it may have had wide hips to give live birth. Others think the wide hips helped protect organs during flank button elo. I like the idea of dinosaurs giving live birth. Me too. That'd be cool. Yeah, ever since our interview with Dave Verricchio, I've been thinking about the possibility of live birth. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Homolocephaly had long legs and was fast, and had probably had a very rigid tail. And you can see it in the game Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, where you build your own Jurassic Park. So now, moving on to Prenocephaly. The same people who described Homolocephaly described Prenocephaly in 1974, the same year. It's Marianska and Osmolska. Awfully suspicious, one might say. <laughs> And so the name Prenocephaly means sloped head. Must have had very distinct heads. Yeah. It lived in Mongolia in the late Cretaceous, and fossils found include skulls and fragmentary postcranial remains. There's three species. There's Prenocephaly prenis, Prenocephaly brevis, and Prenocephaly edmontonensis. And the type species is Prenocephaly prenis. There's another suggested synonym to Prenocephaly, in addition to homocephaly, and that's Spherotholus. Prenocephaly was an herbivore about 7.8 feet or 2.4 meters long and weighing 280 pounds or 130 kilograms. Prenocephaly had a round sloping head with a row of small bony spikes and bumps. It was thought to have a stout body with a short neck, short forelimbs, and long legs, and this is based on other pachycephalosaurs since all that's been found in Prenocephaly is mostly skulls. Some scientists think Prenocephaly may have been an omnivore that ate plants and insects, though many think that it ate leaves and fruit. It was probably a selective browser since it had a narrower snout than other pachycephalosaurs. And pachycephalosaurs, as we've talked about a lot, may have headbutted or they may have used their domes to attract mates. Teenage or young adult pachycephalosaurs were best equipped to handle headbutting. The skulls had radiating structures that compressed, which provided cushion during a fight. And adults didn't have these structures. In June 2011, Eric Snively and Jessica M. Theodore published in PLOS One, and in this study, they compared Stegoceras and Prenocephaly skulls with headbutting mammals like elk and muskox with CT scans. They found Stegoceros and Prenocephaly domes were most similar to muskox and Dewiger. And interestingly, Stegoceros was most able to headbutt. In July 2013, Joseph E. Peterson, Colin Dishler and Nicholas Longridge published in PLOS One, Distributions of Cranial Pathologies Provide Evidence for Headbutting in Dome-Headed Dinosaurs, Pachycephalosauridae. And this team studied 109 domes from 14 species to see if there was evidence of headbutting. 22% of those domes showed evidence of osteomyelitis, which often comes from skull trauma. Because there was evidence of this, a lot of evidence of this, they concluded it was consistent with the idea of intraspecies combat. They also looked at 30 skeletons of headbutting mammals and found that 
Quote, comparisons with injuries in extant bovids illustrate the variation in injury and lesion distribution related to behavior and suggest that the distribution of injuries in extinct animals can therefore be similarly used to infer behavior in extinct taxa, end quote. So, a lot of evidence that Pachycephalosaurus did headbutt, which we know has been a big debate. Yeah. And a lot of that does come down to you don't know exactly what they were headbutting, if they're headbutting each other directly head to head, or if they're hitting each other in the sides or what. Well, it sounds like Peterson and his team concluded that it was them doing interspecies combat, so they were going head to head. Eh, I don't know if it's head to head, though, because intraspecies combat could still be like flank butting or whatever. Oh, that's true. That's true, you could still have skull trauma for that. Yeah, but it's really hard to figure this stuff out just from bones. But the study is called headbutting in the name, so... Headbutting doesn't necessarily mean they're butting head-to-head, though. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It's tricky. It is. Those pachycephalosaurs. (laughs) So pachycephalosauria is a clad of ornithischians, and the name means thick-headed lizards. They lived in the late Cretaceous in North America and Asia, and they were bipedal and, of course, had thick skulls. 